welcomes Vin Diesel in studio, NBC. South Padre Island to Rio Grande City. This is Local 23 News at 10. Good evening, Valley, and welcome to Local 23 News at 10. I'm Jeremiah Wilcox. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sydney Hernandez. Putting local first tonight, an active shooter notification system will soon be made available in Texas. Lawmakers say the system is intended to save lives. Our Tylisa Hampton is putting local first tonight as she brings us how the bill works. It's only one piece of such a larger um, piece of the pie when it comes to making sure that nobody dies of massive gun violence. That piece is House Bill 103, an active shooter notification system that passed unanimously in the Texas Senate and was signed into law by Governor Abbott. But Representative Mary Gonzalez says it was brought about by a tragedy. When it came to the shooting in the Midland Odessa area, um, because it was an active shooter who was traveling, uh, there, there, there was a sense and a very real sense that had people been notified, they wouldn't have maybe left their homes or left their areas. She says this notification system will work similar to others. Very similar to silver alerts and amber alerts. Um, when there is an active shooter in a 50 mile radius, you would get an alert. Some of the bill's key components is in section 411.375. Number one, believes an active shooter is in the agency's jurisdictions. Number two, determines an active shooter alert won't assist individuals near the active shooter's location. Number Number three, verifies the active shooter situation through preliminary investigation. And number four, provides the active shooter's last known location. Um, from what I understand, DPS is in charge of the system, and so they would have notification of the active shooter and then send out um, the notification. And although the alert system works similar to others, Forest Police Chief Andy Harvey says it shouldn't be taken the same. We don't want to get to, to the point where, you know, it's like, car alarms where we don't even acknowledge them anymore, right? This is something different. We need to make sure that when something comes up and, and it's a, a, an active shooter that we actually look. As of now, the bill is set to take effect on September 1st. Putting local first, I'm Tylee Sampton. weather. We did have a couple of heavy showers today, Isaac. All right, now let's get a check on weather with Chief Meteorologist Isaac Williams. Yeah, they've died down for now. That's some good news. And we're going to be looking at another small chance of rain tomorrow. That front that we were tracking earlier has now basically stalled and become a stationary front this evening. And again, most of us are dry, but we are going to wake up tomorrow morning in the mid to upper 70s, around 80 degrees. Going to be another warm, muggy start to the day. And if you live closer to the island or in the lower valley east of 69 East, we could see a few heavier showers again flare up overnight. Most of that will stay closer to the coastline. And then by the time we get to 7 a.m., most of us likely will be dry. We should see increasing sunshine tomorrow afternoon with highs back in the middle 90s. Even hotter air in store for us later on in the week. And I'll have the latest on that coming up in your seven-day forecast. Jeremiah. Thanks, Isaac. And today, the Department of Homeland Security announced new criteria for people enrolled in the MPP program. The agency says they are expanding the pool of individuals who are eligible for processing into the U.S. This will include individuals who had their cases terminated. The new criteria will take effect tomorrow. For more on the agency's expansion, you can head to our website at valleycentral.com. And despite being deported to Mexico due to a Trump-era health order, many Central American migrants who want to claim asylum in the U.S. say they won't go back home. Hundreds of families remain camped in Mexico as they say they face violence and discrimination if they return to their home countries. Asylum seekers are looking to President Biden to end a Trump administration health directive known as Title 42, an order that allows U.S. officials to rapidly expel migrants in the midst of the pandemic. We believe that there is, there, it is possible to both protect public health of, of the U.S. in this case, or public health, as well as protect that ability uh, to seek asylum uh, and seek access to territory in terms of, of the claims to asylum. Advocacy groups and U.N. officials say the policy is subjecting migrants to the same dangers as the policies of the Trump administration. A White House spokesperson says Title 42 was a public health directive, not an immigration enforcement tool, and was necessary on health grounds. 
happening across the RGV in a city council meeting last week. Edinburgh city officials issued a proclamation from the Holy Family pro-life apostolate asking to make Edinburgh a sanctuary city for the unborn. Three council members supported the idea of making Edinburgh the first sanctuary for the unborn in the valley. If it passes, Edinburgh would join around 30 other cities who are also sanctuaries for the unborn. Currently, there is no motion to make Edinburgh a sanctuary city, but Councilman David White indicated he'd like to do so. There's really not a lot that we can really say, but we've, we've got to push forward toward mayor, and if we could second it now, I'd be happy to do it, but we've got to go through the proper process. The decision in Roe versus Wade means that abortion is a constitutional right, and it would be illegal to ban it outright. And over in Alton, the police department is launching a new program intended to address officers' mental health. Police Chief Jonathan B. Flores says the program, Check Up from the Neck Up, highlights the importance of mental health for their officers, and he's offering his department mental health intervention when it's needed. We want to make sure that our officers are taking care of their mental health. Uh, law enforcement suicides continue to rise year after year, and we're just doing this as a preventative effort and doing our part as an administration to take care of our officers and to reduce the stigma associated with officers receiving mental health intervention if and when they are to need it. The program requires officers to speak with a licensed therapist for a post-critical incidents and at least once a year. COVID coverage. Coming up, we hear from federal officials on the administration's push to address vaccine hesitancy and equity. And state park prep. Up next, the latest on parks across Texas preparing for a record turnout this year. That is next on Local 23 News at 10. Mr. Rivas, what are you doing in Vegas? The Las Vegas Furniture Market. I'm here to make good deals for my customers. Let's go for the hot deal. 7533 Boca Chica. You're smart. You're doing the research. You know what to buy and how much you should pay. That's why Tipton Hyundai doesn't play games. You'll get a five-star buying experience from a professional sales team that treats you like family and makes it easy and stress-free to buy. For a limited time, buy a new 2021 Hyundai Elantra from $19,999 or a new 2021 Hyundai Venue from $19,499. Since playing games isn't your thing, siempre, Tipton Hyundai. It's your guardian angel. It's your muse. It's your smart dress, tech and tent, safety obsessed superhero. The Hyundai Sonata and Elantra. Hey, it's your journey. Own it. Get 0% APR for 60 months on the Elantra or Sonata or get up to 3,000 in savings. See your real Grand Valley Hyundai dealers today. Small businesses, I believe. Help weave people and communities together. I believe in the American dream. SCORE is a nonprofit organization where we provide free business consulting services to people who want to start a business or already in business. I believe one person can make a difference. I am that person. I am that person. I am a SCORE mentor. I am a SCORE volunteer. What do you believe? Do you have a gift to share? Our client success is, is our success. Volunteer your expertise at SCORE.org. brings us together and adds flavor to life. That's why it's important to wash hands, surfaces, and fresh produce. Keep raw meat, poultry, and seafood separate from ready-to-eat foods like fruits and vegetables. And cook to proper temperatures using a food thermometer. Enjoy! and refrigerate leftovers within two hours. For more tips on safely preparing foods, visit homefoodsafety.org. Local 23 News, local first.
Local 23 News at 10 with Sydney Hernandez, Jeremiah Wilcox, Chief Meteorologist Isaac Williams, and Sports with Amanda Atwell. If you're looking to spend some time at a Texas state park this summer, you're not alone. The state park system is on pace for a record-setting year. With parks busiest on the weekends, Texans are turning to weekday trips to experience the 88 state parks across Texas. Park system officials say a lot of Texans chose to work remotely at state parks rather than working from home during the pandemic. And overall visitation this year is outpacing last year's turnout by as much as 30 percent and is already well ahead of 2019 levels. What we notice is that a lot of people that discovered us during the pandemic stayed with us uh, even after things opened back up. So we're still seeing a uh, large visit, uh, large numbers of people visiting parks. 2017 is still the busiest year on record for the Texas State Park System with nearly 10 million visitors. Partisanship proposal coming up, the latest on voting rights and the majority required to move forward. But is that a possibility with a split Senate? And coming up in Local 23 Sports, Texas baseball battling Omaha. We'll have the highlights from the College World Series right after this. After a slight break in the heat today with the rain chances, we start that climb with temperature tomorrow. I'll show you how hot it gets later in the week coming up in your seven-day forecast. A new Valley Central News app is redesigned with you in mind. We've provided a new experience that begins on our homepage, featuring local news blocks, your weather forecast, and easy push notification subscription. There's also on-demand video and streaming alerts. Download or update our new Valley Central News app today. Looking for a job? Check out the new NBC23 Job Board. Get matched to great opportunities based on your resume. Apply in one click. Plus, get alerts, notifications for new postings, and salary information all in one place. Go to valleycentral.com and find your next job today. Community problems. Been there for almost two months. Are our problems. And you're driving past huge mounds of trash, and it's been almost three months. The focus has really been on catching up with the brush. Local 23 News, putting local first. Local 23 News, local first. This is the Tempur-Pedic Breeze, and its mission is to make sleep feel cool. So no more night sweats, no more nocturnal baking, no high blast ceiling fans or polar ice cap air conditioner mode because the Tempur-Pedic Breeze delivers superior cooling from cover to core, helping you sleep cool all night long. And right now, save $500 on all Breeze mattresses and get a free $300 gift. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right Tempur-Pedic. first six-function multi-pro tailgate available in the GMC Sierra. Step up to GMC and get 4,800 purchase cash on this 2021 Sierra Light Duty Crew Cab Texas Edition. Plus, current eligible GMC owners get an additional 250 purchase allowance. We are professional grade GMC. Like many people with moderate to severe ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, I was there. Be right back. But my symptoms were keeping me from where I needed to be. So I talked to my doctor and learned Humira is the number one prescribed biologic for people with UC or Crohn's disease. And Humira helps people achieve remission that can last. So you can experience few or no symptoms. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections. Serious and sometimes fatal infections, including tuberculosis and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened, as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores, don't start Humira if you have an infection. Be there for you and them. Ask your gastroenterologist about Humira. With Humira, remission is possible. Now, Valley Sports Central. 
RGV coaching carousel slowly coming to a close. One of the surprise seats filled for now. McAllen ISD announced today that McAllen Memorial Defensive Coordinator Walter Moses Patterson will take over as interim head coach and athletic coordinator for the coming season. Patterson has served as the Mustangs defensive coordinator since 2013 and has been part of the coaching staff since 2010. He brings to the table 20 years of coaching experience. Well, the Mustangs are going to be the Mustangs. We're going to continue our tradition and, and you know, we're going to continue to run the ball. We'll, we'll do a couple little new concepts here and there, but the foundation's been laid and, and you know, it's my job to go out there and continue to, to lay forth a new foundation for kids that we have coming in and, and uh, you know, hold them accountable for, for previous generations that have come through as well. Now Patterson replaces Bill Littleton, who retired earlier this month. Over on the diamond up in Omaha, who is the real UT? The burnt orange or the bright orange? Well, it looks like that will be settled today. Texas taking on Tennessee in an elimination game. And we might get to see a little more of a McGallan kid. Aaron Nixon on this Texas roster, but the ball is starting off with the lead. Line drive to left. Peyton Manning likes that one, but this lead would not last. Two on for Eric Kennedy. He yanks one right. This ball gone. That'll be a three-run shot in the second. But this game was just as much about the defense. Bases loaded, no outs for the balls. Sharp hit to third, and we will get a 5-2-3 double play. Keeps Tennessee off the board in the third. The balls were tied up at four and four, but the Longhorns found their bats once again and got a couple calls along the way. Texas survives and advances eight to four over Tennessee. Some of us spent our summers slinging burgers or, in my case, folding clothes at a local store. One UTRGV tennis player is using his skill to put him through college, but not in the way you might think. From competing on the court to keeping one running. I am a tennis coach and also I am helping with the shop. UTRGV's Alberto Mello has turned his skill into something that pays the bills. He's spending his summer at New Haven Lawn Club, helping people of all ages get in the game. Uh, young kids from age from three years old all the way until I have one guy that he's like 96. His tennis career has a timeline, but he's making the most of it for now. I started playing tennis since I was like four and for me that's like that's not something that I look into like do for my whole life but as of now I found a way to make some extra money and get to college uh, on my own. And maybe shake some hands along the way. Uh, networking you know like you never know like I have friends that they got out of here like with like a job you know so for me I thought that would be a great opportunity at the end, get to college and pay for my bills on my own. As for what he has learned. Time management and be very proactive. Don't wait for anything to happen. You'll be always like ahead. I still have like two more months to go and I'm looking forward to learn like more and more every day. What I think is most impressive about Alberto is he's using this job to completely put himself through school so he won't end up with any of that student debt and he might actually end up with a job at the end of it. Yeah, no awesome. student debt. I hear that. Yeah, that's awesome. What a great story. Thanks, Amanda. Thanks. In a not-so-surprising move, Senate Republicans shut down Democrats' expansive voting and election reform legislation tonight, voting to not proceed with debate. Our Washington correspondent Jesse Junior has the latest on the For the People Act. Good evening. As expected, that vote fell right down party lines in the 50-50 split Senate, which means it fell 10 votes shy of the two-thirds majority needed to move it forward. The motion is not agreed to. A sweeping voting rights proposal put partisanship in Congress on full display Tuesday. Senate Democrats failed to get 10 Republicans to join with them to begin debate on the For the People Act. The fight to protect voting rights is not over. This bill's not about more democracy, it's about more Democrats. The legislation would remove certain voting hurdles, restrict the influence of big money in politics, and reduce partisan influence over the drawing of congressional districts. Senate Republicans like Missouri's Roy Blunt and Iowa's Joni Ernst see the bill as federal overreach. A national power grab to take away the voices from our local elections officials. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell made sure the GOP remained united in opposition. It is a solution in search of a problem. We will uh, put an end to it uh, here in the Senate. 
but Democrats presented a unified front, too. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer argued Congress must push back against new state laws that make it more difficult for voters, particularly minorities, to cast ballots. And in response to Donald Trump's lies, Republican state legislatures immediately launched the most sweeping voter suppression efforts in at least 80 years. Georgia Senator Raphael Warnock urged all Americans to oppose what's happening in his state and across the country. It shouldn't be partisan. We're in a fight for the soul of our democracy. And right after the vote, both President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris stressed that fight is not over. The president said to expect more on that next week. In Washington, I'm Jesse Chenor. A new political party officially filed paperwork with the Texas Secretary of State this week to become the newest alternative to Republican or Democrat. The Serve America Movement, or SAM Party, hopes to rope unsatisfied Texans in, for, in from both sides of the aisle, offering a middle ground of sorts. The group says they don't require the candidates to stick to certain policies, which means the party could look different based on where you live. Politics in Texas are different from the panhandle to downtown Austin, to Houston, to the Valley. Why would a national party tell all of those members of a party how they have to stand and they have to agree on certain issues? We want candidates to think for themselves. We want candidates that represent their constituents. In order for any SAM candidate to make it onto the November 2022 ballot, they would need 80,000 Texans to officially join the party by spring or spring of next year. Nationally, the group ha only has about 70,000 supporters as of right now. In Houston, more than 150 employees at a Houston hospital system who refused to get a COVID-19 vaccine were fired after a judge dismissed an employee lawsuit over the requirement. A spokesperson for the hospital, Houston Methodist, says 153 employees either resigned or were terminated. The case was dismissed earlier this month. Outrage and claims of racism are growing in Southern California after tortillas were thrown at a high school basketball team during a post-game celebration. After a crushing championship loss for the predominantly Hispanic basketball team, insults added to injury when several players were hit by tortillas. Fans and players from the opposing team, Coronado High, a predominantly white school in an affluent area, were throwing the tortillas. The district school board speaking on the incident, calling the actions, quote, demeaning and demeaning. Disrespectful. And on Capitol Hill, top officials are affirming what consumers have known for months. Inflation has increased notably. Jerome Powell testified that goods affected by the reopening of the economy are most responsible for the jump in consumer prices, which rose 5% in May compared to last year. That is reflected in prices for items like cars, appliances, food, and building materials. Powell acknowledged that some price hikes combined with supply bottlenecks have been larger than expected. The incoming data are, are very much consistent with, with the, the view that these are, these are factors that will wane over time and that inflation will then move down toward, uh, toward our goals and we'll be monitoring that carefully. Powell says the overall economy, economy has shown sustained improvement and that job gains should pick up more rapidly in the coming months as vaccinations rise. And President Biden says he wants to ensure FEMA and other government agencies are prepared to handle and respond to extreme weather events. In a meeting today, the president made it clear the necessary agencies will have all the resources they need to help Americans across the country. Biden today also announcing he will meet with Western governors next week to prepare for drought, heat and wildfires. That was a big job. And we're making sure FEMA and other frontline agencies have what they need to continue getting the job done. And I insist on being ready for whatever comes our way. That's what this is all about. The president also pledged to increase wages for federal firefighters.
And President Biden is expected to announce a partnership between federal law enforcement and local police to help combat an increase in violent crime. The effort is aimed at building on his administration's gun control efforts, and this initiative is set to include new strike forces to tackle gun trafficking. The president is trying to strike a political balance, expressing concern for a very real increase in violent crime like murders, shootings, and assaults, while also keeping the focus on the progressives' efforts to reform policing. And today, federal health officials continue urging Americans to get vaccinated. The push comes as the Delta variant remains a top concern for experts. Dr. Rochelle Levin, Assistant Secretary for Health, says the Biden administration is doing all it can to ensure all Americans have access to vaccines. This includes addressing issues like vaccine hesitancy and equity. Making sure that vulnerable populations have access to the vaccine. And we are doing that with, um, in, in many different ways. We're making sure that doctor's offices have the vaccine, pharmacies have the vaccine, that community health centers have the vaccines. Um, we're trying to see if it helps if some barber shops have the vaccines or baseball games or even NASCAR races. So wherever we, we can increase access, we want to do that. She adds younger people, those age 18 to 26, have become, quote, complacent in getting the vaccine. And this could in turn lead to an increase in Delta variant cases among younger people. We had some big downpours across the valley earlier today, dropping Doppler radar, estimating over three inches of rain. In some cases, as many as five inches of rain in a few localized spots. But other areas like Elsa and McAllen, Raymondville, didn't see much. Brownsville also kind of all around the city there. Port Mansfield kind of cashing in on some pretty good rain totals. Just east of Harlingen, too, up towards San Manuel, Westlaco, and Alamo and Far also seeing some pretty heavy rain totals. Star County seeing some decent showers as well. With all the rain that we saw today, highs were actually held under late June average around here. We topped out at 90 degrees in Harlingen, 91 Westlaco, 91 in Brownsville, 90 also up in Raymondville. And radar this evening is basically nice and quiet. A few downpours just across the border from Rio Grande City there, but all in all, uh, a much quieter picture to the radar than what we were seeing just a bit earlier. We are going to be watching areas offshore because there is still some energy left in the atmosphere to potentially cause some uh, flare-ups of showers overnight closer to the coast and potentially uh, the far eastern parts of the lower valley there. This would be during the overnight hours, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. I think by 7 o'clock as we get the Wednesday morning time frame started, rush hour underway. We probably won't see much rain, and if we do, it should be along the coast or for the island or for areas just offshore. The rest of Wednesday is going to be much drier, relatively speaking, to today. Now, tomorrow won't be fully dry. I think they will have a few showers around, but in terms of the widespread coverage of showers and storms that we saw today, that is unlikely to happen for your Wednesday. We should see fairly quiet weather conditions and one last tiny chance of rain early Thursday morning. 7 a.m., you can see the lower valley or potentially the coast again, seeing a little bit of light rain activity, and then we're going to see increasing amounts of sunshine for your Thursday afternoon, and that's going to set us up for some additionally hotter days, Thursday, Friday, and most of the weekend. That front has basically stalled out now, kind of losing its identity just a bit. Back behind this front, we have higher pressure and hotter higher pressure settling in across the Rocky Mountains, and that's going to send yet another bout of hot, dry weather to the valley. Tomorrow's last rain chance is just 20%. Thursday and Friday, you can put the rain gear away. I think we'll be looking at much, much drier and hotter weather. As we can see on future heat index Thursday, afternoon. We're back to close to 110 for what it feels like. 109 is your heat index out in Harlingen. Again, this is for Thursday afternoon, and that's the type of weather you can expect Friday and most of the weekend as well. A chance of lower valley rain tonight, your low 79 degrees. And then for tomorrow, we're going to be back in the lower 90s, slightly hotter than today. With a variably cloudy sky, best chance of rain for the lower valley is in the morning hours. For the tropics, basically quiet weather expected for the next five to seven days. A quick look at your seven day forecast. We are looking at the uh, chance of rain going down after tomorrow and then uh, the heat, the main story for the Thursday, Friday time frame and into the weekend. Slate us on your weather. We'll be right back after this.
You're both into good food, but still like to keep things simple. That's why HEB has over 350 varieties of meal simple entrees. You're also into good wine at great prices. Turns out, HEB has hundreds of incredible wines with plenty of options. You've gotten into a new series, and it's five seasons long. That's why HEB does all the shopping for you, so you can just pick it up with free curbside. No store does more to bring the best to your door. Shop the app or online and pick up curbside free at HEB. This isn't your typical runaway bride scene. It's a Nissan sales van ad. Now that's something I can commit to. This RAV4 doesn't even have as many standard safety features as this Rogue. Hurry in for a low 219 per month lease on the 2021 Rogue. Love may be forever, but these offers are not. Need cash? TitleMax offers two ways to get it. Get cash using your car title. Go to TitleMax.com, enter the car year, make, model. See how much you can get. TitleMax also offers personal loans. No title required. Check out TitleMax.com when you need more cash. Check out TitleMax.com and shop us for rates. Get up to $2,500 with a personal loan or up to $10,000 using your car title and you'll say, I got my title back with TitleMax. Get a title back with TitleMax. Due to the current pandemic, Ashley Furniture Factory is sending truckloads of furniture to Mikasa Furniture for immediate liquidation. Get your essential savings at Mikasa Furniture, the real home store. 7533 Boca Chica, Brownsville, Texas. The Honda CRV EX is loaded with premium features, like a turbocharged engine for great performance and fuel efficiency, with advanced features like a blind spot information system. Plus, Apple CarPlay integration for your iPhone. And the best part is, in the CRV, premium is standard. Contact your Honda dealer to learn more or shop online. Coming up on Local 23 today, don't call it a comeback. Beginning at 5 a.m., we take a look at local economies and how tourism dollars are helping small businesses get back on their feet as COVID restrictions ease. That's coming up on Local 23 today, putting local first. Twilight fans out there, the Vampire series of Saga is coming to Netflix. That's right, the beloved five films will be available to stream starting next month. On Friday, July 16th, to be exact, all five films will be available on Netflix. Well, I'm a big fan. You guys are not, right? I am not, because it was just, I'm not a fan of like teen teen drama oh stuff. Oh my gosh, it's the vampires. But it's on Netflix, so it's easy to to. If I ever get bored, binge. maybe I can. I'm a <laughs> Maybe I can catch up on Let's just go straight to weather. I've had it. All right, she's at it. We're looking at uh, hotter weather moving in Thursday and Friday. Weekend looks dry. Next week, could see a few showers by Monday and Tuesday. All right, well, that does it for us here on Local 23 News at 10. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Have a great night. We went out to North